Welcome to a code report video where we are going to revisit the chunk scan problem that we solved in BQN and C++ in our last video. And in this video, we're going to solve it in WeWa. Why are we doing this? Number one, I think the top upvoted comment on the BQN versus C++ video was we need more WeWa videos. So you asked, I'm delivering. And the second reason is that while I was in the middle of a live stream yesterday where I was programming in Python on my Scrabble training program, I took a digression for about 30 minutes at one point. And that digression is outlined in the chapters. You can see here at roughly the five hour mark, we went on a jelly slash BQN slash WeWa slash J slash Haskell digression on chunk scan. And at the end of that, thanks to, I believe it was Connectedy, it might've been Enigmatic Haze, one of the viewers in the live chat pointed out that one of the things that I didn't know how to do was possible in WeWa using the custom modifier. So if you are interested in seeing the live stream, you know, path to discovering this, feel free to go check out the five hour mark of the <laughs> seven hour stream. But because I don't think most people are gonna wanna do that, I'm going to make a short video where we briefly cover, recover the BQN solution, and then we're gonna go and solve this in WeWa. So let's quickly do this again. I'm not gonna explain this in as much detail. If you want to see the full explanation, go back and watch the BQM versus C++ video that I just posted a few days ago. But what we're gonna do here, we're gonna break this array up into chunks. Technically, we're gonna reshape it into a matrix, and we're gonna do that with the jot uh, three so that we get sort of rows of three and then use reshape. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a plus scan. Note that this is gonna be a scan with our columns where we want it to be with rows, so we use our cells modifier here. And then once we do this, we just deshape. I showed a couple different versions in the last video, so you know I'm not gonna go over them all here, but this is the basic idea. We want to reshape, then do a row-wise scan, and then deshape. And note that we can factor some stuff out here, so we can put the uh, double struct W, so we can refactor out the length of our rows, and then we can also factor out the binary operation plus, make this a one modifier by putting the underscore in front of the chunk scan, and now we can also pass that binary operation plus in. So we can change this to multiplies, we can change this to two, and it continues to work. All right, there's my very fast recap of chunk scan, a one modifier in BQN. Let's go over to WeWa now and solve this exact same problem in WeWa. The stack language, array language, it's fantastic. We love it. Amazing work by Kai here and amazing work by Marshall as well, who is the individual behind the BQN language. So first things first, we want to reshape. So at first, this is exactly what I did. I built up my array and then I called reshape. And I wasn't actually sure if you could do the trick. So it uses the jot in BQM, but clearly this doesn't work. This is the identity function. However, I went to the docs, read them, and sure enough, if you put a negative one, that is the equivalent of what we did in BQ1. So it's gonna infer the dimension here based on the number of elements and the value that you pass as the other dimension. So fantastic, this is exactly what we want. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna factor out this three like we did previously. So if we take the three, down here, this is now probably not gonna work. And the reason is, is this underscore doesn't mean anything. So really what we wanna do is we wanna make an array out of the negative one and the first value three, and we're just gonna use join for that. So fantastic, we factored out our three. Next thing is we wanna do our row wise plus scan. So we're gonna call row scan plus, hit control enter, and we're good to go. And the last thing we need to do is just call D shape. I actually commented in the live stream that I didn't understand why they were using this symbol. But I'm pretty sure, and I even made a comment about it being from, it looks like it's from music notation, and I should have made the next step that this is the flat symbol. So flat, another flatten, another word for D shape. So actually a pretty good choice now that you see it, even though it looks a bit odd next to the other characters. And so this is pretty awesome. We basically have our dyadic function now, very similar to BQN, but the last part that I didn't know how to do, that it was only thanks to the live chat that I was able to figure it out, is that how do you pull out this binary operation? I'm not really sure how to put functions on the stack. And the answer is that you can use or create something called a custom modifier. If you put an exclamation mark at the end of your function, you can then replace any of your operations with a hat and then the arity of the function, or I believe what WeWa calls a signature definition. So that's just a two. So now this represents a binary function. And so now if we put the plus right here, boom. Look at that, fantastic. This is the exact equivalent, basically, of the user-defined one modifier in BQN. This is a 
custom modifier that takes a binary function. Absolutely fantastic. Amazing work to Kai and to Marshall and to all the folks making these amazing languages. I'll end the video there. Hope you learned something. If you want to, like I said, see the real-time exploration of this kind of stuff, I will leave a link to the timestamp in the description below. Feel free to leave your comments. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.